hopping on to Facebook too. All right. Looks like we're live on all places. So, um, how are you? I feel like it's life's just getting too busy. Um, between being sick for so long. So super excited to be back. Yay. I know Wednesday is not my typical day, um, for going live, but I don't know my hair's doing something funky. Um, Wednesday is not my typical day for going live. Um, but my schedule's getting really busy. Hi, Ruru. Thanks for joining. Um, which is really kind of like a, a really good problem to have, right? Um, my, my goal is to, um, work as much as possible for like during the school, um, times, like, you know, when my kids are in school. So, um, got a couple of thoughts rattling around in my brain today and, um, just trying to figure out, you know, where the best one was. So I'm going to start with, um, sharing just a little bit about, um, me, um, as a person and kind of like, um, how I kind of view the world and, um, oh, thanks for the key. And, um, you know, I'm right. So right now, um, is a really difficult time for a lot of people. Um, in particular around the holidays, not, not necessarily because of the holiday itself, but because of like family dynamics. Right. And we know, um, at least I, hope that I have, um, hit it home pretty hard, right? That, um, your mindset comes from, um, I don't know why I'm so foggy on, um, on, oh, there we go. <laughs> that was a fingerprint. <laughs> so, um, so we know that our, our mindset is formed, um, by, you know, where we grow up, right? What part of the world we, we grow up in first and foremost, right? Our, heritage, culture, um, race, ethnicity, like all of that stuff. Right. Um, as well as your family dynamics, right. Play a huge role into that. Your family culture, right. Which is, um, probably a mix of all of that stuff becomes like your family culture, right? Like your family traditions. Oh, Marion, thank you for the rose. I appreciate it. Um, thanks for joining. Hey, Stacy. See you popped on too. Sometimes the, um, hi Julie, thanks for joining. Sometimes the, um, the scroll goes so fast. I don't, I don't catch, um, who's on here. So, um, so in particular, I find that, um, and I have found this for many, many, many years. So in particular, I have found that, um, October, November, December tend to be some of the, the hardest months for a lot of people. And, um, whether it's driven around, um, happy memories that are no longer because we've lost people in our family, um, happy memories that are no longer because people have moved away. Um, people have grown up, right. You know, cousins who were once three to 12 are now all adults raising their own families. Um, they may have moved out of the area. So now they live in different States, different countries, different providences, different towns, like whatever it might be, depending on, um, where you live in the world. So <coughs> <coughs> things change <coughs> and let's, let's, let's stick with the happy place today. Right. Okay. So let's stick with, let's start with, um, the happy stuff, right? and the happy stuff from growing up that has contributed to our mindset. Right. So, you know, say you have like a certain tradition for, um, the holidays in October, if you celebrate, you know, well, I guess it's Halloween really a holiday. Maybe I don't really know, but, um, so that kind of starts it right. Is, is Halloween for a lot of people. So say you have like this really cool family tradition of, you know, all your cousins get together and your aunts and uncles and grandparents and they come over and, um, they carve pumpkins or they make cookies or you do, I don't know, hunts or whatever it might be. Right. So as you get older, that changes. And if you don't have 
the people around you. If you don't have a family of your own yet, however, you don't live close to your family and they don't still do those traditions, like you're going to miss them. Right. So that can make you a little sad. Right. Um, and then, you know, the, the things that go on in, in November, um, the things that go on for different cultures, different families, different parts of the world for December as well. So, and, you know, say in particular, you had um, a grandparent that you did really cool things with, like, you know, maybe like one of your grandparents loved to bake cookies, right? So you'd get together and you'd bake cookies and that grandparent's no longer with us. Um, and now you're baking cookies with your own children, right? You're maybe your nieces and nephews, right? You're continuing that tradition, but it still makes you sad, right? For the loss of not doing it with that grand, that grandparent. So, so many people that I have been talking to, um, in particular, the past eight to 10 weeks, um, that has been like the, the strongest current of angst, I'd say, um, and sadness, and it leads to self doubt and it leads to, um, a lot of negative self talk. It leads to a decrease in self care, right? Because now you're feeling sad. Um, so you start to, you know, stuff that stuff and feed your emotions and nurture your emotions in ways that aren't necessarily healthy. Right. So in, in, in particular, when you're starting an online business or starting to make money online, um, all of that stuff plays a role, right? Because, you know, I've, for anyone who's new on here today and, and doesn't really know a little bit of my story, um, I have worked for myself since 2006 um, as a, a licensed therapist doing life coaching in my own office, so brick and mortar, um, taking the show on the road online, right? Um, so what I have found through all of the years since 2006, right, is August and December are the two slowest months, right? And this year is no different. I went from, and it, and this is, this is really ridiculous to think, right? So, um, I went from, I only work maybe 25 hours a week. I don't work a lot cause I work for myself. So, oh, thanks for the fire. I really appreciate that. Um, so since I do work for myself, I don't have to work a lot of hours for a six figure income. Right. But I also had to get a master's degree in order to do that because that's where my passion was. That's where my road led me. Um, and I'm super grateful for that. I don't have to be, you know, slaving away, making someone else rich, working 60, 70 hours a week with a, an hour commute each way, right? Or even 40 hours a week with an hour commute each way. I'm not giving 50 hours of my time to anybody else, right? I'm giving about 20 to 25 of hours of my time to people who are paying me for that time, right? So, I'm super, super, super grateful for that and always have been. Thanks for the um, heart, Marion. Um, so that's not the case for everyone. And I understand that. But this year is is no different. The month of December, I've gone from 20 to 25 clients each week to about 14. Right now, that's a huge drop in my income. Huge drop. Right. Right. Um, but throughout the year, I prepare for that. You know, I, I pay myself my December pay. I pay myself every week, right? I have a little account that I put, you know, a little bit of money in. I factor out how much money I usually lose in the month of December. Um, and I divide it by 52 weeks, right? And because um, the cool thing is, even if I go on vacation, I still try to see like, five to nine people, because that gives me a good paycheck for that week. Um, so it's not like a full loss, right? But I also pay myself for my vacation every week of the year, right? I have a little bit of um, vacation funds. So I, I pay myself paid time off, right? So like those are the things you have to do when you're self-employed because you don't have, you know, earned time, paid time off from an employer. So um, 
So for the people that are looking to make money online, the people that are looking to build that, the people that are looking to start that, um, I find this December is maybe even a little bit more challenging because of, you know, the, the big announcement that we're entering into a recession and blah, 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 right? And all that, that was scare tactics, right? When, um, if you really think of it, there's an abundance of everything. It, we're not, we're not without, right? Things may have became a little bit tricky two years ago when people were out sick and things were closed and, and stuff like that. Um, we're not at that level anymore. So um, the, the scarcity is just, it's made up at this point, in my opinion. Um, not to get like all like, um, you know, conspiracy theory or anything like that on anyone. Um, but I, I don't, we're not lacking, right. Is my, is my opinion. So, um, but what I find with the, in particular, with the people that are looking to start and build an online business, right. So the people that I've been talking to in particular in the online space, right? Um, they're getting really discouraged because um, sales seem to be down. Um, people coming into their um, their world, right? Whether it's like, you know, their Facebook group or different accounts, different platforms. I do Facebook organic um, primarily and, um, and FUD. I love FUD. I love the FUD community. I love the FUD app. It's a really cool um, place to be as well. So, you know, I give my time to both those platforms and, um, a lot of people are having a hard time with the past, I'd say six to eight weeks, because it seems like, um, in particular, the affiliate marketing space is shifting. And, um, I don't know if it's because people are, you know, there's some people that are saying like, there's, there's such like a negative attachment to that right now. And I don't necessarily know that that's true, like on a larger scale, but, um, I think if you are looking at the business of affiliate marketing through one lens and that one lens is not such a good lens, right. Um, you know, you're watching people fight back and forth and, and really like, shit on each other and tear each other down and, you know, like all of that, like that negative marketing, um, then I guess you could come up with the opinion that it is a, a, a negative business model, but, um, it's not right. It's not, it, it's really not any different than, you know, watching a McDonald's commercial claim that they have all the best food. And then you come on and watch a, a Burger King commercial or chick, um, the chicken place. What's the chicken place? I don't even know. Um, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Like, or depending on where you are in the world, right? You have two businesses that are doing the marketing, claiming that they're the best, right? So that underline says that they're better than their competitors, but they're not outwardly shitting on their competitors, right? They're letting their own product shine right? Their own way of doing things shine, right? That's good marketing. That's good marketing. Do that kind of marketing, right? If you want to be polarizing, be polarizing, but be polarizing in a way that isn't bad marketing, <laughs> right? Um, because that, there's a finesse to being controversial, right? There really is. And it fe if you're a highly controversial person, it feeds into people's natural negative mindset, right? Because people, we are, I read this in a scientific journal before. I don't know which one. I wish I could find it. And I probably will Google it again. But I know I read in a scientific journal one time that said, we are more disposed to being comfortable with negative than with positive, right? Um, and, and all these years of work that I've done this, I find that to be true, right? 
I don't know if it's something that's just been developed over thousands of years, hundreds of years, you know, like the unwanted family heirloom that's passed down, you know, like that, that family culture that creates that mindset. Um, who really knows where the hell it comes from? Because I don't necessarily think there's like a negative compartment in our brain that like overtakes everything else. Like I truly believe that that's the nurture part of us. Um, I can honestly say, I do not believe I was born with the negative gene. I, I, I have, I cannot think of one time that my instant way of thinking was waiting for the other shoe to drop. Um, it, it, I, I just never have. Right. And, and I don't, I don't know why. Right. I don't know why. Um, because my roots. So here's where I'll share a little bit about, you know, my, my story and my journey, um, because it's come up for a lot of people, um, recently. So I recently did a 10 day live challenge, um, in my, my coaches, um, Facebook group, right? Super fun. I love doing the live challenges. I love going live. I love being, you know, center stage. I, you know, I don't have a problem with that. Not that I like the sound of my own voice, but I just, I like it. I enjoy it. I like, um, sharing that part of myself with people. So, but I just, so that live challenge ended and, you know, I shared a lot about, you know, who I am and where I come from and what makes me tick and stuff like that. So now a good friend of mine, Mark is doing, um, a 10 day live, um, Facebook challenge in his group contest, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, so I, heck yeah, I'm going to do that. Right. So some of the same people are, are in it, which is really cool. There's some new people in it, which is really cool. Right. Um, but the other day, his question for, I believe it was day two was, um, what is your why? Like, what is your why for wanting to do an online business? What is your why for, um, wanting to make money online? Right. And, my why is not to quit a job that I hate. My why is not to get out of um, a working situation that I don't want to be doing anymore. I love what I do, right? I will I will never give up doing what I do. I was picked by some something bigger than me to, to do it, right? I truly believe that. So, but my why is, is a little bit of backstory. And this is really important in ending 2022 strong and starting 2023 stronger. Hey, Jill, thanks for joining. Um, I always, I, so I said to my coach the other day, I'm like, I want to walk out of 2022 feeling strong and I want to waltz into 2023 like a lion, right? Hear me roar, right? And um, I set a goal for myself to, reach and work with as many people globally as I can. That's my goal, right? Um, if I can say one word, if I can say one sentence, if I can say a multitude of things that impacts someone that keeps them going, that's my goal in life. Then that's a good day, right? I don't even have to know necessarily. They don't even have to tell me, right? I just want to hope that by me sharing it, by me saying it, by me doing it, I'm impacting people globally, right? So that's my goal. So getting back to the Facebook Live challenge. So the question was, what is your why? And that's a typical, you know, question for a lot of people. It's a typical question on a lot of courses, like, what is your why for doing this? You need to know your why, why, you know, besides time freedom, financial freedom, like blah, 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 right? That's everyone's ultimate goal, right? That's a given. So but when I went to college, it was before I had children and um, didn't really know, obviously, what my future would hold. And the family that I was born into, um, the people that were responsible for birthing me, um, not Stella, right, um, born into a dysfunctional dynamic and... I grew up 
always feeling like I didn't know where I belonged, right? Didn't know who I belonged to, didn't know what house I belonged in, um, didn't know what family I belonged in, but knew I just didn't belong in any of them, right? I just never felt like I belonged. So when I got pregnant, now my daughter will be 18 in February, right? So when I got pregnant, I clear, I can't remember that I need three things at the food store, but I can remember the day that I found out that I was pregnant. And I remember sitting there and I remember closing my eyes and I remember saying world universe, whoever, Hey Scott, thanks for joining. Um, I remember saying whoever is listening to me right now, you know, um, if I deliver this baby. I vow to be everything that wasn't given to me. And the day that my daughter was born, I truly feel like I started to live that day. And talk about like a huge, now this is a deep one today, guys. Sorry, right? <laughs> Sorry. Um, but again, because the holidays bring up so much for so many people and so many of my conversations have been around all of this, I felt like I want to end the year strong and I want to help as many people that are like struggling with the family shit as possible, right? So talk about like a huge wave of shit hitting my brain as the nurse, doctor, whoever it was that handed my daughter to me. And I feel like my heart started beating for the first time in my life. I knew where I belonged. And set out every single day to be the best mom that I could possibly be. It was extremely important for me to have my daughter not ever question where she belonged, not ever questioned if she was loved, not ever question if she was liked, not ever question if she mattered, if she was important. And working for myself has gifted me the time to be able to do that. Scott, I see your question. I'll get to it. Um, give me two seconds. Um, <clears throat> it has working for myself, being my own boss. And I've taken other jobs. Like I've, I've been an employee a few times throughout all of her life, but I've always taken jobs that took place during school time hours. So I was home for her, right? Dinner every night, like all that stuff. Um, so that's my why. That's my why now is to continue to build an online business, to continue to build up my mindset coaching so I can globally impact as many people, regardless of where you live in the world, right? Globally, regardless of what your family culture is, your family values are, your ethnicity, like none of that stuff, right? Um, none of that stuff I want to be a barrier, not saying I understand every culture because I, I couldn't possibly, right? Um, but I am multicultural trained in sensitivity as far as like working with people. It's part of my requirements I have to do for my license. So, and growing up where I grew up, I grew up in a, in a, in a small ish city, like North of Boston, Massachusetts. Like we had people from all over the world that I grew up with, right? Some of my my best friends growing up were, you know, from a multitude of different countries, like their families, like first generation, um, natively born, like in the U S right. But their parents were, you know, immigrated from a different country. So, um, so that's my why, my why is to be there for my daughter as she enters college, as she finishes her high school years, be there for my son, who's turning 13, right? So now, you know, it's it's kind of like his time to shine, like he's into sports and I don't I don't want to miss a practice. I don't want to miss a game. I refuse to, right? So 
despite the foundation that you come from, despite the foundation that you've tried to build upon, everyone's foundation has freaking holes and cracks, right? All of ours do. All of ours do. Even if you were raised in a healthy, loving home, you still have cracks in your foundation. You still have some holes, right? So despite all of that, how do you build on top of that? How do you build the life that you want? How do you build the relationships that you want? How do you build the business that you want, right? Um, somebody had posted, I think it was yesterday. Um, I don't remember exactly what they posted, but, you know, my, my, one of my responses to it was sit in that pain, sit where that pain comes from and grow from that spot. Stop running from that pain. Stop ignoring that pain. Stop putting that pain on a shelf in your brain. Sit in that pain and grow from that painful spot. That's how you fill those cracks in your foundation. Um, uh, Scott, I'm not sure what, um, what fear you mean. Can you let me know, like elaborate a little bit more on fear, like fear of success, fear of failure, fear of sharing your story, fear of your own thoughts, fear of fear of what, or all of those. <laughs> I'm hoping that one of those, um, kind of touched upon the, the fear that you're talking about. So, um, for those of you that have, um, watched me live before, like, you know, I go deep, um, and I go deep because shallow just doesn't work for me. If you're, if you're building an online business or if you've started to build an online business, right? Imposter syndrome, shiny objects, you know, um, Fear of whatever has already come in to your life. It already has, right? But it doesn't come from business. It comes from your foundation. So um, fear of all those, but fear of I don't know enough. Well, Scott, fear of you don't know enough to... Be successful on your own or fear that you don't know enough to be of assistance to somebody else, right? Um, yes. <laughs> yes to both of those. <laughs> um, all right. So fear that you don't know enough to build an online business, right? So if you've, um, if you've, Fear of all those, but fear of I don't know enough. You don't know enough on your own. If you've purchased an online product, an online course, if you've worked with a coach, um, if you're fearing that you don't know enough, it's because you haven't most likely successfully repetitively use the tools that you've learned in that course from those coaches, from the book, from the webinar, from the, um, uh, podcast, you know, all of the above from the book you've read, from the blog you've read, whatever. Right. So that would be my blanket answer is, Fear of trying, fear of failing keeps us complacent. So our mind does this really shitty thing. And I don't believe it is a purposeful self-sabotage. However, our brain sabotages us all the time. And Fear keeps us cemented in this place because if I stay here, 
I know what to expect, right? And we hear that all the time, like, just get out of your comfort zone, blah, 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 blah. Well, super easy to say, not easy at all to do. Thanks, Carol. Um, there are steps that you have to take, right? So I like, I like, and I dislike the term go big or go home, right? So all oh, thanks for the key. Um, I like go big or go home because it gives us a sense of encouragement, right? It gives us a sense of strength, like just go out there, like, right? Just go out there and do it, right? Yay. But the other part of your brain is going, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of scary on that side of the road. Like you don't know what's going to happen. Um, what happens if it doesn't work out the way that we think, right? So then all of those self-doubt thoughts come in. All of those like self-sabotaging mindset comes in. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I think I'll just, I'll just stay right here because as human beings, we will continue to do what benefits us. Even if that benefit or those benefits are negative benefits, we will continue to do what benefits us, even if the outcome is a negative outcome for us, right? We do it all the time. You see people, um, Oh, I want to lose weight or I want to quit smoking or I want to go to the gym. Um, I want to be a better friend. I want to be a better employee. I want to be a better parent. I want to be a better child. I want to be a better wife, blah, 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 blah. I want to, want to, want to, right? If it was so easy to do it, there wouldn't be a job for me, right? There wouldn't be someone who people came to and paid good money to work with to understand where in your foundation those holes are and where they came from and how it's impacting your success, right? Um, so you have a lot of that self-doubt. Absolutely. And you know, like, number one, 99% of everything we do and don't have comes from our childhood. That's a fact, right? It is a fact. We all came from somebody's birth canal. We all did. I don't care if you came from a C-section. We all came from someone's birth canal right into their family right into their, um, their, their generational family, their generational family values, right? We all came from the same freaking place. So I have a client who used the term, um, generational trauma and it is so applicable because, and I've said it for years, like even I can pick out when I have conversations with people, I can pick out people that come from certain types of dysfunction, so to speak, um, based on how they speak, based on how they view themselves, based on how they view the world, right? Um, so self-doubt comes, first of all, from our foundation, right? Not to put blame on anyone, just acknowledge where it comes from, it comes from our foundation. And it could also come from our fantastic ability as human beings to set ourselves up for failure, right? Yes, I said it. We stay where we're comfortable. We continue to do what benefits us, even if the result of that is a negative result, meaning something that we don't want to continue, right? Oh, I want to lose weight, but oh, let me go order six meals from McDonald's this morning because I deserve it, right? Well, what? That That is so misaligned, right? But we do it all the time. Oh, I'll quit smoking tomorrow or I'm, I'll go to the gym tomorrow, right? Um, we talk ourselves out of doing 
and accomplishing our goals all the time for fear of the unknown. Self-doubt can also come from you trying to do things and they didn't have the outcome that you wanted. But I ask you, why didn't they have the outcome that you wanted? Did you truly, truly put in 100% effort 100% of the time or even 80% of the time? Did you put in 100% effort? Because we all need days off, right? So self-doubt might very well possibly come from your, your comfort zone, right? Um, I, for one, have, so here's, here's the thing, right? And, and I'm not going to, I'm going to show you how just because you have something doesn't mean you'll be where you want to be in your set time goals, right? So real quick, unless ever, anyone else has any questions, I'm going to jump off after this because I have a, I have a two o'clock meeting that I need to prepare for. Um, 10 years ago, July of 2012, I left my marriage, right? I had a three-year plan. I was making $140,000 a year. 10 years ago, I was making $140,000 a year, working 30 hours a week, part of it for myself, part of it I was contracted with a different company, went into people's homes, did behavior modification, right? Um, left my, my marriage in July of 20, 2012, um, and had a three-year plan, right? I was going to be able to buy my car outright. I was going to be able to pay off my student debt. Um, I was going to be able to save money to purchase my own home, right? This was 10 years ago. Moved out in July. I was able to live rent free because I was able to, I was taking care of my grandmother. So I was rent free. My kids and I had a little, you know, a bedroom and a living room upstairs in her house, a full bathroom. You know, we shared her kitchen downstairs. We took care of her. We kept her, we were keeping her out of the nursing home, right? July of 2012, $140,000 a year I was making, working 30 hours a week. I'm not lying, right? awesome plan. I only needed about $25,000 a year to live on. So that's a lot of money I was going to be able to, to, to save and in three years time, right? I was going to almost be able to buy a house outright at that time, right? Guess what happened? October of that year, I lost two thirds of my income because the company that I was working for had a massive audit by a state agency and they cut everything that they were reimbursing us for that we were doing. They cut 95% of it out and they were no longer going to fund this program that I was working for. I went from $140,000 a year going to be able to almost purchase a home outright in three years to making less than, well, I don't know, was it two thirds I lost to making less than $30,000 a year. I needed 25 to live, right. To just, you know, car payment, food, like childcare, like tuition costs and all that stuff. I lost all of my income to no fault of my own company audit from a state agency cut all of our funding. What was I going to do? So slowly had to build up, right? Slowly had to build up my, my, my private practice working for myself because I lost this huge contract, right? I wasn't an employee. It was contract. So, so what happens, right? You get down to the bare minimums. So now you need to start living off of credit cards, right? Got myself in like $40,000 worth of credit card debt in 2013, 2014, 2015, right? Just was never able to get up to the point where I was making enough to start paying down stuff, right? So the debt grows. So 
finally get that paid off. My three-year plan went out the window. My grandmother passed away a lot sooner than we ever expected. We thought she'd be alive for 10 more years, right? So not only did I lose 100000 plus of my income, um, lost my grandmother, who was my rock, my soft place, set out for some additional goals. Those didn't work out, right? So now, 10 years later, despite having goals, despite having work for them, despite having to do, not having, choosing to do different things, right? To double, triple, quadruple my income as a single mom. I have not yet been able to do that in 10 years. Part of it because I don't want to work evenings. I want to be home for my kids. That's my priority. So here I am 10 years later, having had a solid three-year plan twice that didn't work out. Here I am 10 years later, almost in the same exact spot as I was 10 years ago. Still have my student loan debt. It's actually a little bit higher because all, all I can afford is to pay the bare minimum, right? Because again, my priority is to be the best mom that I can be. Money is whatever it is, right? I'll make more money. I'll pay it off, like whatever. So I haven't let any of that stop me from trying new things. I don't set long-term goals anymore. Clearly the universe has a different plan for me, but um, it hasn't stopped me from trying new things. It haven't. It hasn't stopped me from working towards my ultimate goal, which is to be debt-free and to have my own home, right? Probably town home at this point, right? But whatever, like my own, a place to call my own. So I don't know where I have found that strength and that confidence to do that. It's not always easy. I'm not 100%, 100% of the time. Um, recently, some major things have shifted or are going to start shifting in my life. Um, not unexpected things, but an unexpected timeline. And, um, you know, it, it, it threw me for a loop for a week. Like I was so consumed with this over here. I, I was almost crippled creativity. I was almost crippled with online stuff. And when I, when I'm struggling with something, I go dark because I'm not used to having support, right? So I see a thread of a lot of that coming from the people that I'm having conversations with, um, in, you know, in real life as well as online. So if any of you have any of that going on from your family, from your foundation. From goals that you've set for yourself. Sit back and, and, and sit. Hey, Ruru. Sit back in that pain. Do something creative. I'm a fan of creative visuals. Get a big poster board, a big white poster board. Draw it out like it's a, um, oh, no problem, Ruru. Um, get a big white poster board, right? You know, the, the kind that's thin enough that you can cut. Draw puzzle pieces, however big or however small you want, right? You know, um, write everything that's painful for you write everything that you've overcome write everything that's joyful write everything that gives you strength inside of different puzzle pieces right so write the story of you in these puzzle pieces right you can decorate them if you want to or it can just be words right you don't have to do it all at once either it can be an ongoing project but once you have all of those puzzle pieces filled with everything you think is important to who you are as a person, 
who you are as a person in your family, who you are as a caretaker, who you are as a son, who you are as a daughter, who are you are as a mom, a dad, like a partner, you know, a friend, um, colleague, like whatever it might be, right? When you feel like you have all of those puzzle pieces filled with pieces of who you are, pieces of the things that give you strength, pieces of the things that give you fear and self-doubt, right? Then cut all the puzzle pieces out. Get another poster board or a piece of cardboard, right? And put all those puzzle pieces into um, like a box or a bag or something like that and shake them all up, right? Blindly take out just one of those puzzle pieces and put it on the, the big piece of cardboard or another poster board, right? Um, put it on there and work on that one puzzle piece. Work on sitting in that joy, work on sitting in that pain, work on that, pull out as much memory that you can, pull out as much joy and flourish in the joy, pull out as much pain, self-doubt, fear, right? Pull out as much as you can out of that one puzzle piece and work on it, right? Once you feel like you have a firm understanding as to where that stuff comes from, pull out another puzzle piece and do the same thing. That serves two purposes. One, you're emptying that emotional trash can that we all carry around, right? all of the like least wanted experiences, least wanted memories, least wanted words, least wanted actions, least wanted stuff that we've accumulated in our lives. And two, you're building a connection with yourself. You're building a connection with your mind, right? You're building that connection. That is going to lend itself to you being able to move forward and decrease your fear, decrease your self-doubt, decrease your feelings of I'm not enough, decrease your feelings of I don't know enough, right? It's going to be hard. It, if you do the work, it's hard. It's hard, right? But you already know what's in here. This thing that we carry on the top of our body that runs our whole entire body, our brain, is the most hostile place you will ever visit on the planet. Right here. And you're the only one that knows about it. You're the only one that knows what's in here. You're the only one. Nobody else has access to it unless you show them or unless you share it with them. So that's what I recommend you do. If you want to have a good understanding as to how your foundation is. Do the puzzle. Let me know how it works for you. Um, I think lack of confidence plays a big role in creating self-doubt, right? And lack of confidence can come from a lot of places, you know, similar to, um, similar to everything else, right? Lack of confidence could be, you know, you've tried to do things before and, um, oh, hey, Billy, thanks for jumping on. Um, lack of confidence can come from, you know, trying to do something and, and it didn't, you didn't have the end goal that you wanted, right? So yeah, I mean, would you call that a failure? Probably, right? I just, I don't, I don't like to put negative labels on things. So, um, I would prefer to say your undesired result, <laughs> right? Because to me, that just seems, um, I guess it's just semantics. It's just my preference on, on wording and, and the way my brain works. Right. So if something didn't work out the way that you intended for it to work out, 
similar to 10 years ago when I left with a three-year plan and I'm still in the same spot that I was 10 years ago, right? Um, with the exception of I don't live in my own place and, you know, I no longer live with my grandmother because she's passed away. So, um, yeah. So try the puzzle piece. Um, it is extremely effective. It is um, something that I have recommended just a few times over the years. And um, it visually, it's extremely powerful. Um, and it's extremely healing. And it's extremely eye-opening if you, if you sit with each piece and, and work through it. So um, I... For those of you who are not maybe aware, or um, for those of you on FUD um, who may not be aware, I do on Monday, I am hope. So this was just a fluke, right? I, um, after my dark moment last week, I had posted um, something playing on like the ugly sweater party. Um, I had posted, I was going to host an ugly mindset mastermind, right? And I got really great response from it. Like, I think I had like 12 people in there now. So for any of you guys that are still watching on FUD or may potentially watch the replay of this, um, this coming Monday, December 19th, I will be hosting an ugly mindset mastermind. It's free. Uh, it's going to be at noon Eastern standard time. If you're interested in joining, send me, um, so if you're watching this on FUD in my profile, I have a link to my Facebook group. If you wish to join my Facebook group, um, join my Facebook group, and then I'll be able to add you to the messenger chat where I'll be posting the Zoom link on Monday. Um, it is going to be, um, it is going to be Zoom. It, it's going to be done via Zoom. So we're all in the same room at the same time because I want people to have, um, live interaction, um, access to my brain, right? So similar to Scott asking questions today and, and me kind of going off and, and pulling that all like, that's my goal. My goal is for, for people to be able to do that on Monday. Um, so again, any of you on FUD who want to participate in that, again, it's free. I don't know how long we'll go for. It depends on, you know, questions and, and all that stuff. Um, I can talk endlessly on mindset. So Oh, you welcome, Marion. Yeah, it, it was. It's going to be a little deep the next for the rest of December. Like the my lives are going to be deep because I think it's important based on what I'm seeing in the market. Um, so again, if any of you are interested in the in the Ugly Mindset Mastermind, um, reach out to me at, at, in some way. I'll add you to the group chat, and then on Monday you'll get the link to the Zoom to be able to to jump on. Um, and you know if. If by any chance you do work a full-time job and, um, you know, you want to at least be able to ask questions, um, you can, you know, always do that too. So, um, oh, you're welcome, Ruru. Yeah, it's, I, I, I'm, I'm getting better at, um, sharing who I am. Um, I don't know, you know, for, for those of you that may remember or may have caught the live like before, like I was, I've been, because of what I've done for work in person, I've been conditioned to not share who I am. So it's a, I need to, to decondition that, um, for online. So as I build my personal brand, so I'm, um, I'm getting more used to all oh, thanks for the heart, Mary. And I appreciate that. Um, I'm getting more used to like rolling in my, my story and my journey um, on my lives. So, um, yeah, so, you know, but so I will be going live again next week, um, and the week after, and then we'll be done for 2022. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Um, but yes, the, my next two lives are going to be deep. The topic's going to be heavy. Um, I think it's important and, um, thank you, Scott, for asking those questions. I really appreciate that. Um, you're welcome, Scott. Um, I'm not sure who's still on um, the live on Facebook or um, YouTube, but thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Um, ended up going a lot longer than I had planned, but whatever. What can you do? Um, oh, thanks, Carol. Thank you, Marion. Thank you, everyone, for um, sticking with me on FUD. I really appreciate that. 
And again, in if you if you're interested in catching me in other places, the link in my bio does have my Facebook group. Um, if not, I'll be on FUD, right? I think I already have my next one um, scheduled for next Wednesday. And uh, I had to cut down to just once a week because my schedule is is getting really full um, during the day, which is a good problem to have. So um, thank you, everyone. And if you have any questions, if you're watching this on the replay on, on Facebook, you have any questions, comments, whatever, feel free to put them in there. I'll, I get tagged. So um, I'll come back and, and circle around and answer them. And um, I hope everyone has a great rest of their Wednesday. Bye. Thanks, Kiro.